How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to Cardboard Sim. This is part two of my force feedback yoke uh, DIY setup, I guess you could say. So, for those who have been following me, you can see that this is this is totally different than how it was before, um, and that's because that setup it just was not going to work for me. Um, and as far as the uh, the setup from the Sidewinder Force Feedback 2 yoke. Yes, it does work with XP Force right out the box for the most part. Problem is with my setup, it just wasn't strong enough. And I got to tinker with stuff and tinker with stuff, trying to figure out ways, and I ended up frying one of the boards anyway. So that project, as far as that goes, is over and done with which is fine because like i said the motors wasn't strong enough to do what i needed to do anyway and i knew i was going to have to completely redo my setup so moving forward this is what i have now don't worry about all these wires like a, this is all the everything from um moby flight and all my switches and stuff that's already there this right here is all new so what i've done is um, I have <laughs> manufactured uh, somewhat of a system, um, doing a lot of digging around and just getting other ideas from other simmers and their DIY projects. And uh, I've come, I kind of combined it all into one. So first off, uh, we have the two motors. Those are 775 motors. Um, the ones that come in the, uh, the force feedback yoke are five fifties. So these are much bigger, um, much stronger than those. So that shouldn't be no problem. Uh, second over there, there's the power supply. None of the, nothing is hooked up right now. I, right now, this is just part, part two. This is just pretty much showing, you know, the mechanicals and the functionality of how everything is going to be working. Um, the next video, which will be part three, will actually be once I'm done wiring everything up. So right now, I'm just kind of placing everything to see how things go. Now, as far as the motors go, they are set. So all the moving parts are all set. So that's the power supply. And then uh, right here, we have the two motor drivers. Those are the BTS 7960s, which I'll be using. Um, that is a Leonardo board. Um, which I'll be using as well. Um, that's just a mega along with that one for all the switches and stuff for Moby Flight. So what I've done here is <laughs> it's it's a contraption and it and it took a lot of thinking and, and, and going back and forth and standing in lows for an hour or two just brainstorming how I need to get this to work. So originally, from this point forward, was hooked up to the original CH product yoke um, system. So in order to get this to work, I dismantled all that, and I ordered a gear um, that's a three-quarter bore uh, with the chain, and then there's another pulley there. So, in order to get all this to work, I had to, as you can see, I've had to get different couplings. This is another uh, PVC pipe that it looks like a piece of wood, but it's actually PVC pipe. It just got dirty from sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. Um, so, I had to, like, sand pieces down so it would fit to each other and then, you know, bond them together. So that's how that is set up. And then this is just pretty much connected to the yoke through there, down there, and out. And then at the end here is where my roll potentiometer is. Um, it's kind of semi-intact. Um, I won't completely set it until I know where my center is. Um, but for now, it's, it's somewhat there. 
um, I kind of have it set to where I can get a full uh, 90 degrees left, 90 degrees right. So we'll figure that out later. Here we have um, just some pieces of PVC pipe that I've cut out and I've put in here in place so that the yoke mechanism doesn't slide back and forth. So it stays put. And then I just got some three quarter clamps there and an inch and a quarter clamp there to kind of just stabilize everything. Uh, here, <laughs> I used a, um, it's a, I bought a GoPro pack of like just different things you can use, you know, for your GoPro. And I really don't use all of it. So this is just kind of an extra piece. So I use this um, as my center point guide, I guess you can say. This piece right here actually came from the CH yoke. If anybody ever seen the bottom of a CH yoke, um, it's like the, the inside and how it works. From the, the pitch potentiometer, there is a long black slider that hooks up to the center pole. And so as you slide back and forth, that, that rotates your pitch potentiometer. That's what that is. And all I did was took it off and I took my Dremel tool and I drilled a sliding or a hole out so that when it goes back and forth, which you'll see here in a minute, um, it turns the potentiometer here. And as you can see, I just use hot glue. It works, it ain't going nowhere. So I'm fine with that. Um, like I said, I'm not too much into the aesthetics of the back as long as everything is somewhat neat, <laughs> organized to a degree, um, but it's functional. So that's how that works. And that, I have this running through the belt that runs the pitch motor. Now, as far as the pitch motor, um, I'm running um, a G2, G2 pulleys with the belt and the, I don't know, the belt connector, I guess you can say. Uh, and all I've done was another little piece of plywood from the remnants of this and created this. So this is attached to this. So when the whole mechanism moves back and forth, the motor is going to, you know, move this all in one motion. So that's how that's set up. And I just have this, um, like I said, another pulley right there. Like I said, I'm about to show you here in a minute how this all is working. Um, and this piece and the motor, the roll motor, are sitting on drawer sliders. Same one as this one, they're just shorter. So that's pretty much how I set up. And then here are my wires that are ran through for my push to talk button. Like I said, nothing is connected yet. I'm just getting an idea. But I think that this is pretty much how I'm gonna have things set up. This is about the best area I can put it, um, just because I really don't wanna put it on this side since most of my stuff is over there and I have more space over there. I probably have it on that side. And it's easier accessible on that side anyway. Um, I actually had to slide this out so I can actually get back here the way I want to. But yeah, so so I'm just gonna reach behind and move the yoke back and forth. So that's my center point. And the only reason why I know that, um, I measured, so originally, this is full forward. So I just measured from this, this the most forward point, I guess you could say, or the most rear point to the backstop, which is pretty much the wall. And that was about a, about four inches. So that's about, I get about four inches of travel. So two inches made it my center point and I just kind of marked it there, as you can see. Um, so I know that that's my center point, but here you go. So full forward, full back. You see the potentiometer turning, you see the motor turning. So that's my pitch and all of this in sync. So I had to um, put these two boards on um, just to make sure everything 
is in line as well as that. So let me pull it up so maybe you can see a little better. All slides. And the same thing is going to apply. So whenever um, I do the throw reyoke situation, there's the other slider. So once I throw that over, then that one's going to take over and then slide with everything. So everything is still going to work the way I, as planned. And as far as the roll goes, as you can see, the potentiometer is turning inside here. It's connected to this. So this is stable and it's connected to the actual system. So as I'm turning, I know that's a mess. Um, I'm not good <laughs> with, you know, smooth and stuff. I mean, I could probably take my time and sand it down and make it pretty, but like I said, it's not that serious as long as everything is connected as it should. And there you go. You see the motor turning. And I got to figure out what that squeaking noise is. Something is rough. I want to say it's these wires. Um, if that is the case, then I'm going to have to uh, reroute them another way. But that's about the best way I could do it right now. But other than that, as you can see, it does work. Everything goes as it should. So, that is the new setup for the force feedback DIY, uh, I guess you say Bonanza throw over yoke system. So, stay tuned, guys, for part three, which will be coming up more than likely within the next couple of days or so, depending on how much time I got. Um, I probably might, I might start doing a little bit of wiring up tonight. We'll see. Um, I probably won't get it all done though, but um, part three will probably just will be the the wiring of everything. Um, maybe even wiring and test. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, either way, um, part three is on the way. So you guys stay tuned. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, also, real quick, um, everything that I ordered was from Amazon. So the motors, the drivers, the Leonardo board, the power supply, um, all that was even down to the the G2. I'm, one day when I actually get some good, good timing, um, I'm going to sit down and I'm actually going to fill out my description so you guys can actually see everything that I have. I just haven't had an opportunity to do it because I've been so busy with other things. Um but like I said, either way, if you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Cardboard Sim, signing out.